Good morning, everyone. I want to invite you to open your Bible in the same Bible reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 because in the next minute we will work in this special verse from the Apostle Paul to the Corinthian church and we need understand the principles that God have uh, for us in this special morning. Uh, parallel to the Apostle Paul, James developed throughout his epistle the importance of works and actions in the use and development of faith. In his presentation, guided by the Holy Spirit of God, the Apostle James says that faith is so important in our lives that without it is impossible to please God. As Martin Luther said, our job is to bring the gospel to the ears and God will bring it from the ears to the heart. When the believer understands that the key to a successful faith is related to a lifestyle that demonstrates the powerful works of God, he is able to thrive. Walking in faith is a constant dependence on his presence and a submission to his authority without claims or speculation. Walking in faith is beginning an adventure where I decide to believe in God above all things. Hence, the title of this morning sermon is this, put your faith into action. Put your faith into action. I would like you to join me in rescuing four spiritual principles that we find in this text of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In first place, we must put your faith into action to please God with your daily walk and not with words alone. To please God with your daily walk and not with words alone. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Faith is the foundation of our relationship with God. And without it, it is impossible to try to develop a sincere spirituality. Without, without faith, it is impossible to walk in a stable and safe way. Because faith is the fuel necessary to believe in God and not die trying to walk our own way. The use of faith goes far beyond human logic and the physics of this world. 
Faith is a security that rests on the will to do good, even, even when experience and surrounding realities show something different. Faith has the ability to change a reality because it rests in the power of the Almighty and eternal God. One of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit of God in the believer, what is faith? The follower of Jesus find that assistance from above that stimulate him on the day of trial and adversity, but at the same time drive him to continue forward and reach the next thing that comes. Going through this life seems difficult due to the inconsistencies I pronounce inconsistencies of our development, development and immaturity in some areas. But when faith comes into action within us, we begin to be what we were not before and begin to enjoy our passage through this world safely and fully. Walking in faith is understanding that God has promised to walk by our side and assist us in every event and circumstance. Putting our faith into action is understanding that God is going to give us what we need at the right moment, not before or after. One day, two great thinkers were dis disputing, disputing the time money equation in their lives. While one said that the changing element was money, the other challenged him to see that what is more relative than money is time, the time. Because one can know how much money you have in your favor at the present, but never how much time you have available. Jesus thought us the most important thing to enjoy the experience in this life and please God is to put all things in their right place. What is from God to God and what is from this world to this world. True faith in action challenge us to rest in the promise of God over the realities of our environment. Joshua in chapter 24 tells the people of God, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. And he said, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua was very clear that the secret to true success was believing in God over the realities that surround him. Obedience to God goes beyond the context and circumstances. It is a clear decision of a living and real faith, not feigned or simulated. In second place, put your faith 
into action. To give up habits that destroy and distract your calling. To give up habits that destroy and distract your calling. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7 verse 23 he said but I see another law at war in me waging wars against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at war right in me. The habit, habit, no, it's habit, no habit, habit. Okay. The, the habit that destroy our lives are all those that are in opposition and disagreement with the commandments of God. Bad habits come as a consequence of the disorder passions that begin from widening us when we feed our hearts with bad things that are alien to God. It seems that the distinctive touch of original sin has blinded us and corrupt us to do precisely the opposite of what God expects of us. The Apostle Paul said to the Corinthians and Galatians, both in chapter 5, a leader is worth through the wood badge of doubt. It said, A little is work through the wool batch of dog. Do, dio, do. Those disordered passions that find a place in our daily uh, living agenda begin to establish themselves as a routine and over time they become a habit, a habit sometimes difficult to break when practiced for a long time. Throughout the Holy Scripture we can find an interesting list of disorder passions that distance us from God, many which we must battle until our last day in this world. <laughs> A list of all the different stages of our life where we have struggled, perhaps are struggling, and will continue to struggle until God called us into his presence. Here are just a few disorder passions to remember in the list of the Bible. I need your help with the pronouns because it's difficult. Uh, greed, pride, gluttony, gluttony, Gossip, sensuality, sensuality, deceit, adultery, adultery, greed, revenge, lying, lying, lean, lying, lying, hatred. Fornication, resentment, arrogance, disbelief, disbelief, among many others. It's a long, long list. 
The word of God teach us that above all things worth, we must wear our hearts because life flows from it. Jesus goes on to explain and expand this word when he said, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. It is not in vain that the psalmist tells God in a sincere prayer of confession in Psalm 139, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. The seriousness of remaining in disordered habits and passions is that they destroy us little by little in the different areas of our lives. They began by destroying our relationship with God, with our family, with our church, with our friends, or even with co-workers. But in addition to destroying relationships, the habits and the passion, discerning passions, destroy our calling and our responsibility to be salt and light in the world. The best medicine is to recognize and sincerely confess, confess to God so that we may access the forgiveness and cleansing that only the work of Jesus on the cross did for us. Confession and turning away from such habits will be the beginning of a new experience in our walk with God. King David shares that he was internally destroyed and ashamed until he confessed his transgressions to the Lord and received forgiveness for each of them. May God help us identify those habits and disordered passions to hand them over to the Lord and receive from him the forgiveness and cleansing necessary to continue. In third place, put your faith into action to serve with excellence and without altering the commandments that God has given you. To serve with excellence and without altering the commandments that God has given you. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, the Apostle Paul said, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Last week, we remember when the eternal God, creator of the heaven and the earth, calls a man to establish an eternal covenant. That man was Abraham, and when faced with God's proposal and invitation, he did not hesitate 
for a moment to walk blindly believing God. During his experience of faith, God had to work with him on different occasions to form a firm, solid, a stable character. Walking with God is understanding that acting or having a false pretense is not necessary, but that the only integrity and dependence on God are. When we look at another great man of God, we find the prophet Elijah, who had found the secret and the key to living in a unique and genuine faith. When God's people have become corrupt by turning away from God and changing their option, they option of worship to false gods, Elijah kept his faith intact in the one true God, the great I am. Elijah knew what, what it was like to serve God with excellence without changing or altering the message that God had given him to transmit to his people. Perhaps the key to success was that he lived every day in the presence of God. That integrity drove him every day to expand his faith to unique levels to the point of, of standing in front of thousands of people and challenging an entire town to recognize that there is only one true God. Like Elijah, perhaps we must learn to walk not only under the covering and assistance of God Holy Spirit, but under obedience and sub subjection to him. When we look at the biblical characters, we find that they were people of flesh and blood, just like us, with strength and weaknesses but they had made the decision to submit their lives to the authority of God to be instruments in his hands. Like each one of them, God is expecting our service to him to be the best in obedience, effort, commitment, dedication, fidelity, integrity, and holiness. In fourth and final place, put your faith into action to allow God to continue molding your character to that of Jesus Christ to allow God to continue molding your character to that of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we have two verses for the same idea. The first is in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, when Apostle Paul explaining that God is continue working in our lives until the last day in this world. But the first John in chapter two, five, the apostle said, but if anyone obeys his word, 
Love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. It's a beautiful verse. But if anyone obey his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Two of the most significant biblical people used by God in the Old and New Testament, God had to work on to mold their character, both with tremendous capabilities, with the highest academic knowledge available, and political and social level, but with, with a weakness of character in which God had to work with them. One, on the one hand, we have Moses, who had been raised in the royal palace and received the best education as well as social and political instruction sufficient to be a great leader. But all those abilities and skills would not be enough to be a spiritual leader of God's people. God had to have a long process that lasted about 40 years to work on Moses' character so that he will be ready to be the instrument to guide his people to the promised land. He had to learn patience, dependence, submission to God's authority and trust. On the other hand, we find the Apostle Paul, another tremendous man with whom God had to work with internally in order to make him a key instrument for the expansion of the Christian church of the first century. Um, used as instrument to write in the Bible the will of God. God had to mold his character which was filled with pride, arrogance. I need your help with this word. Houtiness? 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 Yeah, haughtiness. Haughtiness. Yeah, haughtiness. Thank you. Obedience and mercy among others. When we look at Moses and Paul, God wants to work in us to form into useful instruments for his purpose. That was his message to the church of Philippi when he said that the one who began the good work in their life was going to continue perfecting it day by day. Remember Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. What peace it gives us to know that God is not finished with us. That day by day, he will continue to form our character to resemble Jesus. To be alike in love, service, humility, mercy, obedience, and in pleasing 
God with our daily walk. Hence, the importance of putting our faith into action in all areas of our life. That's why put your faith into action in the midst of uncertainty and instability. Put your faith into action when everything seems to fall apart and is lost. Put your faith into action when your strength runs and your emotions become disillusioned. Put your faith Dissolution, thank you. Put your faith into action to rest in the security that he is always in control. Put your faith into action to shine with a genuine testimony in front of unbelievers. Put your faith into action to challenge yourself to see new things from God. Put your faith into action as gratitude to God for his faithfulness and assistance every day. Put your faith into action because it is the way to please God and recognize his authority. May God help us every day so that our faith can be activated every day in all areas of our life to see and contemplate a different God. Amen. I want to share the four points. Put your faith into action. If you can see in each point, you can see the verb. The verb is action. To please, to give, to serve, and to allow. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of faith because it helps us in our daily walk with you. Thank you because through faith we have found the path that you gave us through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you because that faith helped us in different moments of our lives. On sadness, anguish, disbelief, loneliness. Just like the disciples said, increase our faith every day to see you and understand you and contemplate the great plans that you have for our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.